Good morning, everybody. Uh, first off, I'd like to say uh, Happy New Year's Eve. Um, you know, last night it was not the way we envisioned of ending this season. But you've got a chance here to reflect for some of us maybe eight hours, maybe five hours, that there's a lot of good that happened in the 2018 season. Um, first, I think I want to, you know, I do want to commend Greg Williams for the job he's done. The last eight games he's done, I think Greg and his job have done a really nice job in terms of teaching and developing and getting this team to understand what winning's all about and going to achieve some of those wins. Uh, I'd like to commend our players. You know, in-season coaching changes, they're hard. And what they did was they remained focused, they were competitive, and they brought a little sense of pride back to the Cleveland Browns, which is really good. And I know eventually you guys are going to want to talk about the coaching search. Um, I just want to let you know it's going to be very thorough. It's going to be very deliberate. Um, now, Dee and Jimmy have asked me to take the lead in the process, along with various members of this organization. And uh, we formed a search committee. It's going to help us find the best available coach for this organization moving forward. And with that, I'll take your questions. John, why not? Uh, you've seen Greg now for a two-month interview. Yep. Um, and you've already talked about what a, a good job he did, as well as Freddie Kitchens. Why not just continue this into next year then? Well, what, what I want to do is uh, we're going to interview Greg tomorrow. And with that being said, I want to see his overarching vision and plan for this organization moving forward. Uh, I want to he hear his thoughts on the team moving forward, but I also want to be able to explore multiple options out there in the National Football League and just see who fits for this organization moving forward. There may be some guys out there we don't know about yet. So I just want to explore all options and make the best decision for this organization. Do you envision hiring someone else and keeping Freddie Kitchens? I think ultimately what that is is whoever the, uh, the head coach will be in the future, I think he's got to have the ability to hire his staff. Uh, will we make suggestions? Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what all people do. But at the end of the day, it's going to be, be ever, whoever that head coach is, it's going to be his, his decision if he you know, stays or if he leaves. John, is Kitchen a candidate for head coach? Yes, I think um, he's, he's earned that. I think what we're going to do in that regard, he's done a nice job in his role as offensive coordinator. And I think this organization wants to get to know him a little bit better and we'll eventually, you know, get, a, get him in the interview slot and just move forward. John, do you know right now exactly how many people you'll interview or will that kind of go? I do. Is it more than five? I won't talk about the details of who we're going to interview. Write a report that you've asked for permission for Brian Flores. Is that accurate? I haven't seen that report, but I'm not going to talk. Well, no, he's a very highly qualified young man, but I'm not going to talk about the guys we're going to, you know, possibly interview. Even after the fact, would you interview him? Do you believe every? No, I won't say that. Um, say that again. Will you, will you uh, acknowledge after interviews are completed through the media, through PR release? Will you? Who you interview for yes. Out of respect to you. <laughs> John, the, the assumption is you, you came here and you had a list in your hip pocket. Uh, number one, did you have that list? And number two, how often does it change? All lists change all the time, like like every team changes year in and year out, those lists are going to change year in and year out. So what you have to do is you have to stay consistent, up to date, and always refreshing or renewing your list as those processes go along. So, I mean, those lists are always updated on a monthly basis. So, John, how do you balance the success of the last eight games, which hasn't been seen around here in a long time, versus finding the right guy for the next, whatever, eight, ten years? Well, I think um, – what do you want? You want a man of character, a guy who can instill leadership into these young men, a guy who's a collaborative thinker, a guy who's a continuous learner, a guy who's consistent on a day-in, day-out basis who those players can look up to and go, you know what, I'll follow that guy anywhere. I mean, 
once you can get a guy and identify a guy like that, those are the type of guys you're looking for. And that's the, that's the goal with this organization is to get what's best for this organization, find the man of character who can lead young men. When you talk, I'm sorry. I'm John. John. <laughs> <laughs> Tired. John, when you talk about man of character, Greg was suspended by the NFL for a year a while back. Is that a strike against him at all in your mind? I think he's paid his penalty for that. It's not a factor in, in your evaluation of Greg as a potential head coach? I think, no, I mean, we're going to factor in everything. I think what we're going to do here is let's – interview all the guys, come together and realize what's best for this organization moving forward. John, are uh, assistant coaches under contract free to interview or are they just going to stay in place until further notice? Well, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to sit and have a uh, conversation with the uh, coaches tomorrow and just kind of talk through some things and I'll get back to you on that. I'm going to ask you this because he's, he's not working now. Is Mike McCarthy going to be interviewed? You know what, Pat, I have a lot of respect for Mike McCarthy and for what he's done. Um, but again, uh, great question, but uh, I'm not going to go into details about who is and is not on our list. I mean, he's, I mean, he's not connected with another team, so it's not No, like I know him. that, but I'm still not going to talk about the, the details of our list. From the standpoint that he made such a dramatic jump from 0-16 to uh, around 500, uh, there would be some thoughts I would think about uh, maintaining continuity. You know, how uh, heavy is that going to weigh into your, uh, your thinking, uh, maintaining some of the coaching continuity that uh, got you this far? You know, the Cleveland Brown, to me, this is a very hard decision coming up here because what you're going to do is the next man, a man or woman you choose is, or next individual you choose basically is going to lead this organization. And so you want to do what's best for this organization moving forward. And so it's going to be very thoughtful. It's going to be very deliberate. And we're going to do what's best for this organization. Well, John, this, unlike previous years, this, this job doesn't have to be sold to anybody. It's very appealing. And from your standpoint, what are the most appealing points of this job right now? I think this is a very de uh, desirable franchise for prospective uh, head coaching candidates or any coaches. You have a young quarterback. You have a young pass rusher. You have a young team, uh, very dynamic team. Um, I think you have a really good locker room in there. I think the, um, you have assets in place with regards to uh, the salary cap. You have assets in place for the draft. You have a strong ownership, a committed ownership, and then you have a committed fan base. Um, and there's, there's, a, there's a bright future with this organization. Hopefully they can see what we see here. In terms of um, Baker Mayfield and the importance of, of Baker to this organization, how will Baker factor into the decision that you make? And will you perhaps even involve him in the process in terms of having him sit down with your new head coach and make sure that they click and talk things through at all? I think we understand who Baker is. Um, but when you interview coaches, you want to see, you know, ask them, what do you think of our team? Strengths or weaknesses, how can you build upon that? That's kind of what you look for in, in these types of uh, interview sessions. You know, the quarterback is a quarterback-driven league, and he's very, you know, he's a very important uh, piece to that. Um, but will he have any say in the interview and all? No, he's not going to. I mean, let, let management take care of that. Assessment of his rookie year. He's got a lot more football left in him. I mean, he's still a rookie. Um, there's still a lot of nuances in the National Football League. He threw three interceptions last night. I mean, he can still work on those little things, understanding certain things. But he also broke an NFL record last night as well. So you applaud him for that. I mean, you would hope that he can grow exponentially, and by year three, I mean, you know, he is what we all thought he'd be. About Greg Williams, we all, you know he's a hard-nosed guy and all that. He comes in here and tells us every day you, you have to win the meeting, you have to win the day, you have to win the practice. Does that mess, message wear thin? Is that a, one of your concerns? No, I think the the the, the one thing with Greg is um, I like what he's done in the last eight weeks, and I applaud him for that because. He's kind of got these guys believing. They brought him in together as one. He's got them playing hard. Uh, that's all you can ask for. And, and guys seem to play hard for him. And 
they practice hard. And usually, you know, when you play the game of football, you you know, you you play like you practice. And and for eight weeks, these guys have practiced really hard. What is your reservations about him? What are your reservations about him? Well, I want to be able to see everything, and that's why you want to sit down and talk with him and see his plan and see his vision. But I think, you know, you don't want to sell yourself short. Let's go and why not go see other people out there, too, just to see, because you want to do your due diligence. And we talk about doing our due diligence and what's best for this organization. Why not go and look at everybody? It looks like Baker and Freddie have really clicked in these last eight games. Um, is there any concern that you make a move but he's not back. Did that hurts Baker at all? No, you know, you have to, you know, the mark of a good coach is being able to create a relationship uh, with a player, especially at that position. I think Freddie's done a, uh, a wonderful job. Now, who's not to say that, you know, Baker, who's, I mean, I, that's a hypothetical. I don't, I, you don't, ant, I can't answer right now. What's your favorite thing that, that Freddie has done here in these eight games? Well, I, th I think what he's done is I think his uh, he's 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 moved the ball. Uh, he's gotten the ball out of the quarterback's hands quicker. I think he's got um, he's put some flair and different route combinations together that that uh, help out the quarterback. And I just think he and overall he's kind of moved the the bar on the offensive side of the ball. For the roster, uh, how much do you need to add to be a true playoff contender? Well, we have the next two weeks. What we're going to do is do a self evaluation of where we are. Uh, the coaches will probably be working that for the next couple of days, as well as the, the uh, player personnel department. And we'll come back and we'll begin to assess that where, where we need to be in the next three or four weeks. What's your gut tell you right now? How happy are, are you with the, you know, what you had? I'm never happy. <laughs> we're seven, what were we seven, eight, and one? I mean, I mean that's that's an accomplishment where we come from. But our goal was to be competitive in the AFC North year in and year out, and that's what we're going to strive for. When you named um, when you named Greg and and Freddie as coach and offensive coordinator, did you have any inkling whatsoever that Freddie could rise to the status of a head coaching candidate for you, or did he just kind of blow you away with what he's done? Well, I think you, you got a, a really good illustration of what Freddie could do. Uh, in that fourth preseason game. And I've always said play calling is is more, it's an art, not true science. And, and you got to feel the moment. And I think Freddie's got a good feel for that that type of thing. Um, but what we'd like to do is learn a little bit more about Freddie. That's why we're going to sit there and talk to him. What is the uh, makeup of the search committee? I'm sorry? Who's on the search committee? Well, it's members of the Cleveland Browns organization. Is J.W. Johnson on the search committee? It's members of the Cleveland Browns organization. How does ownership fit into the hiring? Is, are they going to just – is it your understanding that the person you recommend will be the coach? Well, you know, I think as, as I look at that, Pat, is um, we have spent six weeks very methodically and diligently trying to put this whole thing together in terms of what's best for this organization moving forward. And I, hopefully we've earned the trust from ownership when we make a recommendation with them that we feel that this is the best coach moving forward, you know, hopefully we've earned that trust and they respect that. How important is the head coach uh, to the development of an organization like this one? The head coach is very important. I mean, who are the Cleveland Browns but those guys that play the game on Sunday and Sunday night? Um, that's who we are. And, and so we ask that guy to be a leader of men. We ask that guy to be a man of character, a continuous learner. Uh, and be consistent day in and day out. Um, yeah, he's important. He's the head coach of the organization. Yeah, how hard is it to get that? Yeah, that's obvious, I guess. But how hard is it to get this one right, John? There are plenty of head coaches who come and go uh, all over the league every year. Well, we'll find out. You know, I mean, this is a hard process, and that's why you have to be prepared, you have to be detailed, and you have to be able to listen. And at the end of the day, you just got to sit and talk, talk through things and make sure this is the proper way to – we move forward. Have you formally interviewed any candidates yet? Have we formed? No, tomorrow we will. Tomorrow's the first one. Yep. Okay. College coaches in the mix. Well, again, from a uh, overarching, you know, long-term strategy standpoint, I'm not going to tell you if we're going this way, we're going this way. Uh, what we'll do is we'll collectively have a, you know, a list of individuals we feel 
that are qualified to be, you know, talked to as a head coach for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, besides the obvious of win more games, what's it going to take for this organization now to take that next step that you expect to take in 2019? I think what you do is you, you go and you reflect back of what got us here. Say, and then what you got to do is you got to set those, you know, have those guys in the locker room and, you know, set those goals high for next year. You know, the first task at hand is to be very competitive in the AFC North and see what unfolds because it all starts there. And pick up where you left off, you know, in 2018 and, and, and set your, you know, dare to set your expectations high. Why not? I just said that uh, this is a player's locker room, and regardless of who the head coach is, they'll, they'll be okay because they have each other. How, how much confidence does that give you um, with this search looming? As I look at those guys in that locker room, it was a little emotional after last night's game, but there was strength of men in that locker room. And, there, and, and there's nothing better than the strength of that men in that locker room to lead you know, those younger players will lead this organization. So I have, I have a complete faith that those guys, uh, even though they feel right now today, they let one get away from them, but they're looking forward to 2019, and they will set that bar very high for themselves as well, and that's all you can ask for. Are you willing, if, <clears throat> if your top recommendation is involved in the Super Bowl, will you wait till then? Or would you prefer to have someone on board before that? Well, we'll see how the process unfolds. Timetable when you want to get. I mean, obviously, coaches got to hire staff, so the longer it goes. The no, I mean, you, you want to be thorough in your your process, Pat. I don't think you can put a timetable on this one. Um, you'll know when it's the right guy. That's all I'm going to say. You interview yeah, Freddie. Greg, tomorrow. Was. When will you interview Freddie? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Hold on. I'm sorry. I was just saying we know the plan was to for Baker to set this year, but the way things turned out, don't you think that puts you on an accelerated time frame that now you can compete for the playoffs next year? It's always be good to be competitive, and I think you know as the course of a season unfolds, a rook, you know, the season is very long, and you know when rookies are thrust into certain situations and all of a sudden they begin to show who they really are. I, th I think that uh, Baker has done that. Uh, again, uh, I'm the eternal optimist. Uh, I believe in those guys in that locker room and I have high expectations for this team moving forward in 19 as well. Mary Kay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I was just wondering, you said you'll start with Greg tomorrow. Um, will you interview Freddie tomorrow as, as well? I won't talk about the details and the processes of the interview, so it'll happen one day. College coaches, uh, so many of them have come out and said, uh, in no uncertain terms, they are not leaving their schools. Does that deter you from reaching out to, to some of these guys that, that have said that? Well, what I'm going to try to do is, you know, we're going to compile a list. The, the committee is going to compile a list of those individuals who are qualified to be head coach for the Cleveland Browns. The Chief's job and when you uh, were hired here, you had all that time to think about uh, uh, how you would handle your next GM job. Uh, part of that, I would guess, would have been uh, how you would approach the uh, head coach search. And obviously, you're not going to give out names, but uh, have you had uh, three, five, or however many names in your mind of guys who would uh, be very good uh, head coaches that you could work with? I have a lot of uh, guys in my head right now. And I had them when I was... Uh, you know, unemployed as well. Um, Joseph kicked most of his uh, kicks into the end zone this, this year. Did you think he could hit one from 57? I knew the conditions of last, you know, um, who knows? I mean, that's, uh, that's one, it's one of those situations. Um, it's one of those situations. I, I can't answer that. You know, I know you will, you're going to say you want to get better everywhere. But, um, what positions do you think need the most improvement? For me to do a thorough, detailed analysis to answer your question, I need about two weeks to kind of do an overarching evaluation. And then the next time we meet, I'll give you an answer to that question. Is this coaching job the most important thing you're going to do in your tenure with the Browns? I'd say it's pretty important. Well, the most important thing is I married my wife, and that was pretty good. Um, but, yeah, this is, I mean, what you're doing is it's, uh, we want to get this right.
for the Cleveland Browns organization and for everybody within, you know, Cleveland because we're going to get this thing right. We're going to take the best. We're going to find the best guy for this organization moving forward. Guys like um, Greg Robinson and Sean Perryman, are there guys that you want to keep? I have, you know, I have a lot of respect for those guys, and I, and, um, I think – what they have done, first off, I want to say that um, I think Coach Wiley and his staff did a really good job of helping Greg along. I think Adam Henry did a really nice job in terms of taking Burchard and getting him advanced and get, putting them in the position they are. Uh, would I like to have him back? You bet. <laughs>